Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I'm going to be sharing what I've been reading. So this was the last week of August into the first couple weeks of September. So I do like to share what I've been reading every month and I'll link up above some previous what I've been reading. So I'm a part of two different book clubs, a church book club and a library book club. So that does kind of change the different things I read and I'll talk about those and also uh, just books I've been find that I find interesting or that are on my to you know be read list. I'm going to turn you around and show you what I've been reading the last couple weeks. So first I'm going to start with my book club. The first one is the book club at the library which is adults reading kids books so young adult and middle grade and this was the choice the remarkable journey of coyote sunrise and this was a really good book and it's something i'm actually going to pass on to my daughter because i think she'll really enjoy it as well but it's about a girl her and her father suffer you know a really big family tra tragedy and they end up converting an old school bus into a home and they travel the country and they meet different people along the way and it's kind of their journey and it's really really good and it's really surprisingly deep and heartfelt for a kid's book and i think um even as a, even as an adult reading this there were things i got because you know when i was younger at this age i would have related to the main character right but now that i'm reading these middle grade young adult books i'm really relating more to the parents in the situation or the adults in this situation so having that different viewpoint is really cool and it's really fun to actually talk about in our book club because you know we have everyone from the their 30s all the way up to their late 70s so you get a lot of different perspective so i encourage you to check out book clubs libraries have awesome programming enjoy them but i really really did like this and it's something i'm going to pass out pass on to my 11 year old as well because i think she will like it so the next one for our church book club we decided to spend the next two months doing to kill a mockingbird which i thought was really cool because I haven't read this since eighth grade or freshman year, I don't remember, but it's been over 20 years. And my perspective from that has obviously changed being an adult life experience, but also with homeschooling, I know a lot more about racial tensions and what went on during history that I come to this with a very different perspective than I did when I was younger. So I was curious to see how I would feel about it as an adult reading this. So I read this and this in two days. So it was really good. So I did pick up the graphic novel version just because our church book club has a lot of older people and they don't really understand graphic novels and they think they're like, you know, cheats for classic novels. And I want to show them that it does bring a lot to the reading. I think it is interesting for the next generation. It does captivate them more than perhaps the originals. That doesn't necessarily mean the original wasn't good. It doesn't necessarily mean that the graphic novel interpretation is better but it's a different way of approaching something. And I really do enjoy that. And what's interesting about this is it's almost verbatim. And it does talk about in the back how the author tried to keep things almost exactly how it was written in the book and like the dialogue and everything. I'll have to say that it was very close. I would read a couple chapters of this and then I would go back to this to see kind of how it played out. Because I remember the main plot of this book, but I don't remember all the intricacies or the relationships in it because it's been so long that I could you know see it with a bit of fresh eyes but I think the graphics were very well done I think it does especially for kids this would have helped me understand the emotional aspect of it better I think if I was able to see it in graphic novel format and again the author does do a really good job staying to the original dialogue the original print some of it's um, a little shorter i would say than the book because there's a lot of description within this book well obviously in a graphic novel you don't have to take as much time describing things such in detail because you have the opportunity of you know full-length pictures that you don't need the word dialogue as much but i really enjoyed it and i think it did help me understand the book better and the little nuances that especially if you're a kid you might not pick up on so i enjoyed that I did really enjoy reading the book again. I think it's very applicable even till today, what's going on in our world. And I think it was a really interesting read. And I look forward to reading it with the, um, our church group the next two weeks. Because again, we have a varying ages, you know, varying life experiences to see what everybody else thinks, to really pick out the themes of the book and the things we've noticed. And that's why I actually picked this up. My library had this as well. And it just goes through 
kind of the basics, the story behind the story. So again, as an adult, I realized that contextual knowledge is important at this time. I do have some contextual knowledge from the history we've gone over in our homeschool, but specifically I want to know what was going on that one led the author to want to write this book, her biography as well, but also the time that it was written or what the time she was going for, what was going on, what were race relations like that. And then it does have, you know, list of characters, summary analysis, and it takes you through. Because again, I think especially as adults, we might not be so used to picking out, you know, themes or symbolism, things like that. We often just read for pleasure, but finding out why the author used certain things in the book, that literary analysis really does help you understand the book more. It's not just reading comprehension. Reading comprehension is the kind of stick lifting you up into being ready for literary analysis. If you can understand, you know, setting, theme, those things, you can better understand and pick apart those parts to better understand the book. So uh, I plan on using this with our group to kind of help guide us as we go through it. So of course, I have to have nonfiction books as well because those are usually my go-to. So I saw this on Mama Librarian's channel and it looked really good. So this is ADHD for smart ass women and how to fall in love with your neurodivergent brain. And my appeal to this was, or the reason I wanted to read this was because my seven year old has ADHD. I do not, I'm very neurotypical, very organized, very regimented type brain. So I thought this would help me better understand what she's going through. And it, it's definitely talking about more women in this. And I'll tell you one thing, it definitely after reading the books, the book, I have a lot more empathy and understanding for women who deal with ADHD. I feel like it's thrown a lot in the homeschooling community, especially that they think they have ADHD, that I had no idea how difficult it could be. Again, not understanding it, um, not really having it. I don't have that perspective, but understanding how deep it can really go and the struggles that can really happen was helpful. But it's not just that. It's also flipping the script of this is much like other ADHD books I've read recently that this can be a superpower and that this can actually be something that benefits you over long term. But something that really helped me was there's a part in here how it specifically when relates to women during puberty, hormonal changes, things like menopause. And that's something my seven year old will deal with, you know, hopefully not for a while, but puberty is on the horizon and knowing how that's going to affect her ADHD brain is really important. Something I need to know as both her parent and educator to better understand and be able to adjust our homeschool to fit her needs. But there was a lot in this I already knew because I've read a lot of books about ADHD. I will link up above, you know, what I read prior to this. But it is useful information, especially if you're one of those parents, those moms, those women out there saying, I'm struggling, struggling with this or I can't get things done. This would be a really helpful book for you. I suggest you check it out, read it through, use the suggestions. One of the things I really liked on here that was a suggestion was something called tapping technique, where it's you learn certain uh, pressure points in your body to calm your nervous system. So that is something I'm actually incorporating with my seven-year-old as well, that when she becomes frustrated and you know goes to that base of her brain, I'm dying, Everything's like, they, they had the fear response right away, right? Like everything is really scary. It's, and that part of your brain is meant to protect you that, you know, if there's a lion in the bushes that you are prepared to survive. But as we've, you know, evolved over time, the lion's not in the bushes anymore, but your brain still has that reaction. And a lot of ADHD brains will have the, you know, basic brainstem, lower brainstem reaction to those things. So realizing how best to help her in those moments where she's like, ah, crazy that, you know, it, it's her brain reacting to something and learning how best to calm her nervous system and bring her down from that is really important. So although I did know some of the information in here already, I do think it was helpful. And if you, so if you're one of those people struggling or someone in your life is struggling with ADHD, this is a helpful book. So the last one I'm going to talk about is our hidden conversations, what Americans really think about race and identity. And this actually went really well with To Kill a Mockingbird. But I have to say, reading them at the same time was a bit hard. It was a lot. And if you're going to read this one, I would, you know, do it in smaller chunks. It's a larger book, obviously, but it's, it can be hard at times. 
So this was a really cool idea. The author decided to start a conversation about race, printing out these little race cards, and it, all it said was six words about race, and people would send in their words on cards. So it kind of reminded me of if you, in the 90s, 2000s, there's something called Post Secret, where people would submit secrets on postcards, and they'd print books out of them. This is kind of what it reminded me of, but it's dealing specifically on race. So it was interesting and it was really eye-opening because again, I think the more perspectives we can get on something, the better we understand things. So these are a lot of stories of people, very much like Post Secret was. And some of them are quick, you know, fit within that six word line, but some are, you know, almost biographies or different experiences people have had. And I think it's really cool. And there's usually within it, these longer stories or like that. And there's this one about, you know, two that really stood out for me. There was a woman contacted because her relative was, they were relatives, but based on slaves. So the owner, the plantation owner's relative or descendant was related to one of the slave descendants and they were related. And another one was this woman found out that she had four other siblings that her mother had given up her four other siblings she was born and they it was because they were biracial so those types of stories i think are really important here especially coming from my place my place is very much a place of privilege you know i'm a white woman i don't really know these experiences i haven't lived these experiences so being able to hear these or read these personal stories really does make a difference but i said like at times it can be you know it pulls on your heartstrings and Gives you that heavy feeling at times but there's also you know really positive things in here as well but i think it does really open up the conversation on race which i think is really important to be having in this country and it's something i would you know incorporate i think later down the road with my kids as well to use with them when talking about race to get different examples of people because again we all tend to live in our own little bubble our own personal experiences that's very important we hear other perspectives and stories from people. So those are the books I read the last few weeks. I really did enjoy all the books and I think having some of those lighter books like The Coyote Sunrise, although I don't have to say all the books I read this month were kind of <laughs> deeper. I guess the ADHD was more lighthearted and looking at you know the positive of it, but looking at it now, there was a lot of deeper stuff I read this month, but that's good. It's good to read books like that. So if you have any suggestions, leave in the comments below. If not, thank you for watching.